Hello class and welcome to our 13th lecture series on microeconomics and I'm your instructor Jamal Haider. Okay, so today we'll talk about the review of market structures. So we talked about four market structures. Number one, perfect competition. Number two, monopoly. Number three, monopolistic competition and number four was oligopoly, right? So we'll start from the first one, which is a perfect competition or found in competitive market. So today's lecture is about the review of all the market structure. So I would like to invite you, invite you to ask the question as much, you know, question as you can to clarify any confusion regarding you know, any market structure, okay? Okay, so before going or jumping into the first market structure, we talked about in our cost of production chapter, when we talk about the cost curve, we talked about that, that the every total cost is U-shaped curve, right, like this, and Marginal cost is upward sloping, but it crosses the average total cost at its minimum. And that minimum is called efficient scale. Right? Why we call this efficient scale? Because the miracle of average total cost is that the more you produce cost decreasing and an efficient scale cost remain the same. So this area in which you produce more, this is the quantity you produce more, quantity, the, 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 the cost is the same, right? The more you produce, cost remain the same. So this is called efficient scale, right? This is the miracle of every total cost. So let's define our competitive market. A competitive market has many buyers and many sellers. We talked about in perfect competition that in perfect competition, there are many buyers, many sellers, right? And due to, because they are selling identical product, which means there is no packaging, there is no brand name, there is no advertisement. Everybody is selling the same product. When everybody is selling the same product, right? then what happened? The customers or the buyers, they are having more choices and they can go to different shops. So in that case, the negotiation power of the buyer and the seller as well, because if you want to, if, if I'm a seller, I want to sell at higher price, then the customer or the buyer will go to the next shop. Or if buyers want to purchase, at a very you know low price and I can refuse and I can say that go to the next shop. So in that case, when we have several buyers and several sellers, in that case, there is no market power left with the buyer and the sellers. In that case, both are called price takers. It means nobody can control the price. If the market decide this is the price, then nobody can influence the price. The seller will see the price and he will think that if I can beat this price, I will stay in the business or I would be going out from the business because I cannot influence the price, right? So the conditions or sorry, yeah, the characteristics of competitive market or perfectly competitive market is that there are several buyers and several sellers right? The goods are identical or largely the same. The third one is there is a free entry or exit or there is no barrier of entry or exit. So the result of the perfect competition is that the action of any single buyer or seller cannot influence the price or have a very negligible impact. So it means nobody control the price. When nobody control the price, then both parties, the buyers and sellers in competitive market, they are called price 
skaters. Okay, those who join late, for them, we are starting the review of market structures. It means we are having a review today regarding all the market structures. Number one, perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. So I assume that you already uh, saw our YouTube lectures regarding oligopoly as well. So we will also talk about the oligopoly uh, revision at the end of this uh, lecture as well. So please stay tuned. Okay, then we talk about the revenue structure of the firm in competitive market. So in order to get the revenue structure, we know that the revenue formula can be derived from the profit formula. So profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. So the objective of the firm and which objective? The economic objective. There are gonna be other objective as well. For example, to be the top class quality, you know, product or to be, you know, the number one company with respect to customer satisfaction. But economic objective of every firm is to maximize the profit. Right, and proper formula is total revenue minus total cost. We talked about that. The profit formula is total revenue minus total cost. And everybody wants to maximize this profit. So it means we want to maximize the, the gap between total revenue and total cost. So there are two options. Either we increase the total revenue or either we decrease the total cost. And then we talked about that, that the total revenue depends on market price multiplied by quantity. So market price multiplied by quantity, so do you think you have control over the price? You are in perfect competition. You cannot influence the price, right? The only thing in the competitive market is that you will have to sell more. So it means total revenue is not in your hand in perfect competition. The thing that is in your hand is to control your cost. You can minimize your cost. When you minimize your cost, you will maximize your profit. So from now on, we'll we will be basing our discussion regarding how to minimize our total cost. Because the other side of the coin to maximize profit is to minimize the cost. When we minimize the cost, our profit will be maximum. So that's why in all the market structure, we always talked about to min, you know, talk, talk, talked about the total cost, how we can minimize that because we cannot control the, our, our total revenue because our total revenue depends on demand as well. And demand is determined by buyers, right? We can influence the buyer, but we cannot control the buyers, right? Okay, the revenue structure of perfect competition is that the average revenue, the formula is total revenue divided by quantity. And we talked about that, that the total revenue is equal to price multiplied by quantity. So we replace the total revenue with its formula. And you see that total, uh, the, the quantity, quantity cancel and its price. So in every market structure, we have found that, that the average revenue is equal to market price. That's it, right? What about the marginal revenue? The marginal revenue is the difference in total revenue or the changes in total revenue divided by a change in output. And which kind of output? Sold. Because we're talking about the revenue. Revenue depends on your sales, right? Your sales, the so change in number of units sold. Right, this is not the number of units produced, number of units sold. So, and the amazing thing regarding the perfect competition is that in perfect competition, the revenue condition was that that price is equal to AR is equal to P, the market price. Uh, sorry, NMR. Right, we talked about that. And this was the example that we did 
In that lecture, it was Smith Family Dairy Farms from your book as well. And we find out that this is the market price and this is the quantity. The total revenue can be found out through multiplying the price and quantity. So where this 30 came from? Five multiplied by six, right? Where this 42 came from? Seven multiplied by six. So total revenue, you can find out that. And what is the average revenue? Total revenue divided by the market price. See? And it is six. So did you notice something? That the AR is equal to P, 666 and 666. And then we calculated the MR, which is the change in total revenue divided by change in quantity sold. So this is the quantity sold, and this is the change in revenue. Right? The change in revenue. This is 12 minus 6 divided by 2, uh, 3 minus 2. Answer would be 6. So you, did you notice something amazing here? That MR is also equal to AR and P, 6. So the condition of the revenue condition for for perfect competition is that the price is equal to AR and it's equal to MR. So that is a unique condition for perfect competition. So whenever the name comes, competitive market, perfect competition, or firm in competitive market, if, if the revenue, you know, uh, question regarding the revenue came, all of a sudden, please do remember that in competitive market, price is equal to AR is equal to MR, which means the market price would be your marginal revenue and would be your firm's average revenue. That is the unique point in perfect competition. So the objective of the firm was to maximize the profit. And what is the profit formula? Total revenue minus total cost, right? So if you pay close attention to this table, table two of your book, so you through Excel or through, 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 through tabular form, you found out that this is your total cost and this is your total revenue and this is your total profit. So where profit is maximum, you see here, other quantity four and five, right? But in reality, you would be having thousands of rows. It's very difficult to find out where is the maximum profit, where we have to produce other, either four gallons or five gallons. So in order to find out that, the economists, they came up with the idea, and thanks to, they proved that as well, that your profit maximization is the condition where MC is equal to MR. Now, question arises, why we find out MC is equal to MR? Because MC is equal to MR will tell you the quantity you need to produce, right? So you'll find out the quantity you need to produce, five. When you produce five, what is the market price? The total revenue is, is going to be 30 and the cost is going to be 23 and you will be having your